all right guys full of coming to you with another video i hope all is well i hope y'all are um attacking this new week and attacking it like a savage you know um as a matter of fact i hope you guys aren't even looking at it as a week i hope you guys are just looking at it as like your daily program but anyway i'm not no inspirational speaker or nothing like that i'm none of the above but what i want to talk about again is uh we're getting back to my point of black thanos you know and right now we have two uh, and, and that's what i'm going to call them now like when when a guy wants smoke and he actually is like he actually is making efforts and actions to get that smoke for those infinity stones meaning uh he wants all the belts uh, i'm going to call him black thanos you know, and, and these can be any fighters, you know, these can be any fighters uh, whatsoever, any weight division. I'm going to label them and call them black panels, you know. So um, now we have two black panels again. But the, the unfortunate thing is the boxing world and their promote and one of their promoters will not allow them to be great, you know. Um, so we're going to start with the case of Shakur Stevenson. You know, as we know, he put on a very impressive performance against uh, Jamal Herring. You know, it led to a 10th round stoppage. He showed speed. He showed grit. He showed determination. He showed combinations. He showed that you can't beat him to the punch. That's what he showed. He got the job done. Boom. Snatches the WBO uh, strap. Now, he says, okay. And this was an ESPN interview. He says, okay, I want the WBC strap now. I want to unify. I want to get that unification going. Who has the WBC strap? Oscar Valdez. What does Bob Arum say? Let's listen to what Bob Arum says. Let's, let's, let's uh, quote what Bob Arum said. I want Shakur Stevenson to be a star. He learned that you know, just be, boxing skills doesn't uh, doesn't translate to um, a, a crowd to big crowds, basically. And that's the saying that you know, if you're a boxer, you're born. You know, in essence, leading to that. And it was the same argument when Bob Arum had Guillermo rigging the owl and rigging the owl put on a masterful performance against Nonito Donaire. It was the same situation. You know, Bob Arum said, "Oh." Rick and Dial is so boring. How can I, um, how can I promote this guy? How can I sell this guy? You know, to people. And then um, you have the same situation with uh, um, Shakur. You know, and he's he's leaning along those lines, saying that yo, if you basically are gonna box well, I may not be able to sell you. You know what I mean? But I find it ironic he doesn't have that energy for Lomachenko. He's never said that once about Lomachenko. He's never said once that Lomachenko was boring. He never once said that Lomachenko was like, um, he couldn't sell. Uh, the fight against Pedraza that Lomachenko had was was not that exciting, you know? I, I believe that fight went 12 rounds. The fight he had against Teofimo Lopez, he picked it up in the sixth round, the, the later half of the fight. But still, you know, it wasn't really that exciting, you know. Um, it, it still was like, kind of like, okay, well, kind of like snooze fest, right? So, you know, we fast forward and we see that, you know, Bob Arum is saying, kind of, kind of saying the similar things again, you know, saying, okay, well, you know, Shakur, if, if you don't if you don't put it on, then, you know, it's going to be hard for you to sell. Right. But he didn't have that energy for Lomachenko, you know. Um, and I wonder why he didn't have that energy for Lomachenko, who, you know, by no means is uh, like uh, like just a knockout artist, you know, can't say he's. He's just like a knockout artist that he gets these guys out of there, you know. Um, speaking of which, Lomachenko has a fight with Richard Comey coming up. Uh, now, the thing about that is, you know, I, I favor Lomachenko. 
I favor, favor the boxer over the the bigger puncher. You know, and I'm not. And I'm saying this because Richard Comey is not necessarily fast or necessarily, and he's definitely not a better boxer than Lomachenko. You know. But shout out to his trainer Andre Rozier, who is very charismatic. You know, charisma, things like that. Um. So we move on to uh, the fact that. This is Bob Aaron's blueprint. Uh, moving the goalposts back because Black Thanos wants all the Infinity Stones. So we now have um, Shakur Stevenson. You know, he, he he called out Oscar Valdez. He said, you know, enough running. Uh, it's time to get this. It's, it's time to get this show on the road. You know, uh, we need to unify. There's no other. As a matter of fact, Shakur Stevenson said, there's no other fight to make. You know, these were the words of Shakur. You know, he said there's no other fight to make but this one. You know, um, so now we're in the situation of um, you know, Bob Arum is saying that he wants to put Shakur Stevenson against Miguel Burchell and Oscar Valdez against Navarrete. Now, in doing so, what happens is that by these fans, of course, you know, because at, at the end of the day, you study patterns and you, and you, um, and you, you know, you, you just study patterns and you, and you just see what the game for what it is. You know, you, you don't necessarily, um, you don't necessarily, how should I say it, uh, you know, assume things, but you just point things out and you see how the game is going. So you have um, Miguel Burchell, you know, warrior fighter, throws a lot of punches and bunches, right? Has a Taylor May style for Shakur Stevenson, gonna come forward, going to engage. Shakur Stevenson's gonna use distance perception, piece him up. And that'll be all that she wrote. Possibly stop him if he buzzes him, you know. So, you know, they want to make that fight. They want to make a Shakur Stevenson, Miguel Bird show fight, right? So, with that being said, what's going to happen is that the defectors, the decaps, are going to say, um, well, Shakur Stevenson is fighting a guy who just got, who got knocked out before his, um, before his fight, you know, before, but in his previous fight, he's fighting a guy who got knocked out in his previous fight. So Shakur Stevenson will not get credit for fighting for Chell. You know, as a matter of fact, what they'll say, the fans will say, oh, he's fighting Oscar Valdez's leftovers. That's what they're going to say, you know, despite the fact that you know, Oscar Valdez was probably on that shit when he fought um, Miguel Burchell. They're still going to say, oh, you know, he's fighting Oscar Valdez's leftovers. So, therefore, he gets no credit for that fight. And, and, and this will happen, you know. But Bob Aram is still trying to make that fight, you know. So, we fast forward and then we have... Um, we have... Uh, we have uh, Oscar Valdez, who he is trying to pair up with Emmanuel Navarrete. Emmanuel Navarrete is at 126. Oscar Valdez will get credit for it because they'll be like, oh, well. He fought a gang guy. He fought a, a, a warrior. You know, that's what they'll say. And, you know, despite the fact that he's coming up in weight, well, well, four pounds ain't that much of a difference, but you, get, you catch my drift, though, right? So this is how they'll move the goalposts back. I already know. Um, so again, you know, Bob Arum is like, he's up to his old tricks again. Um... He knows that the Valdez-Shakur-Stevenson fight is the fight to make, but 
we know what Bob does. You know, Bob Arum will say he promises a fight to a fighter, right? But then he'll make that fighter fight three guys before finally dumping off um, the fighter onto the guy that they wanted to fight in the first place. You know, we know he did that with Manny Pacquiao. We know he did that with Timothy Bradley. You know what I mean? Um, I know that Jay Prince is highly involved with Shakur Stevenson and the monitoring of his career. However, if I was Shakur Stevenson, I would start my own promotional company and I would get with someone like a, like a, um, I, I would get with someone like a, like a Al Heyman or something like that, who's going to give you like kind of leverage and who's going to allow you to uh, do what you do and maybe give you things more on your terms versus um, things on Bob Arum's term, which means that a Oscar Valdez fight may happen in 2023 if Bob Arum has his way, you know what I mean? Um, the thing is, he may say, oh, well, you know, uh, let's say, for example, the Miguel Burchell fight was like, you know, let's say Miguel Burchell won four rounds in that fight. And Shakur Stevenson won the rest of the fight. You know, Bob Arum may turn around and say, oh, well, you know, um, we need a rematch. That fight was close. Moving the goalpost back. Because the thing is, is like, although he says he wants Shakur to be a star, you have to understand that, you know, for the, because he's com competing with MMA and stuff like that, and we know what the majority MMA audience is, and we know how nationalistic boxing is, you know, and we know that in Arizona, in Los Angeles, in these places, in Texas, we know what the dominant fan base is. So if Black Daniels takes the Infinity Stone from Oscar Valdez, which many believe he would, that fan base is now kind of like that fan base is left without a, a champion. You know what I mean? And unfortunately, you know, um, they're not gonna like support your court Stevenson. You know, you gotta believe that. I mean, hell, they won't even give him credit for his Jamar Herring win. You know, so you have to understand that that, that wouldn't happen, right? So, now, we're at, we're in a situation where they're going, where the goalpost is moved back for support, right? Now, let's look at another fighter. Let's look at another fighter situation, another Black Daniels, Devin Haney. So with Devin Haney, we're in a situation where they said that. Um, because of accusations from a woman and, and you know they give women this power now I mean honestly if a woman if a woman even if I didn't do anything even if I had no interaction with this woman or something like that even if I didn't like like even come in contact with a woman a woman can literally uh, uh, tweet oh Fula uh, sexually uh, abused me and I will probably get investigated upon. You know, that's how easy it is now. Right? It's that easy to do that now. So the same thing has happened with Rhodey. Now granted, I'm not saying I'm not saying he's innocent and I'm not saying he's guilty. We have to wait and see. But it's looking like he's not getting the fight with Tank Davis. It looks like that you can pretty much scratch his name off. That fight will not happen with Roley, Javante, Tate Davis. You can pretty much kiss that goodbye, right? So, with this being said, you have another Black Thanos willing to step in to take the fight. And this tells me a couple of things. You have Devin Haney saying that he will be a shoo-in for Roley. Now this tells me, number one, of course this man is always in shape. He's 
man is always in the gym. If you look at his Instagram, all he's doing really is working out, posting some quotes here and there. But he's always in the gym, mind you. So with that being said, he's willing to step in. He's willing to play. Okay? This, this, these are the words that Eddie Hearn. So, another Black Thanos wants an Infinity Stone. And I believe Tank has a belt at 135. I think he does. I think Tank has the WBA regular at 135, if I'm not mistaken. So you have that Black Thanos stepping in. And this is what this tells me. This tells me one thing. Or, or, or another thing. That there is a possibility that the Jojo Diaz fight is not signed and sealed. Because you have to ask yourself one thing. Why would he volunteer himself to fight um, Tank? If he already has a fight date, why would he volunteer to fight Tank if if his fight date is signed, sealed, and delivered? You know, this kind of tells me, uh oh, you know, the fight is not the fight is not the fight is not signed, sealed, and delivered. And the thing is, is that the last time that we checked. They said the reason for the fight not being signed, sealed, and delivered is because of the body testing. Because Jojo Diaz was dragging his feet with the body testing. If body testing was a problem, if body testing wasn't a problem, why is he dragging his feet? That's what I'm wondering. Like, okay, well, you know, Vada shouldn't be an issue for you. You know, um, but apparently Vada is an issue for him. So this tells me that, okay, this fight is not signed and sealed. And it tells me that, you know, Black Thanos still wants everything. You know, that this Black Thanos still wants everything. You know, um, so again, we're, we're in this scenario where this guy can't even get his mandatory to fight him. And... Uh, sign the Vada testing thing or 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 get do Vada. You know, we're in that scenario right now. And so he says, okay, let me get a shot at Tank then. Which means that the O doesn't matter for his record. You know, which means that he figures that, okay, if I get this O, then I'm still good. You know, I still have a big trajectory. Right? So, at this time, I think the boxing world, personally, and, and mind you, uh, Devin Haney is a free agent, so he can work with anybody. You know, he has, uh, he has, what you call it? He has uh, leverage. You know, Devin Haney has leverage. So that means he can work with, like, ESPN, he can work with the Zone. He can work with Showtime. He can work with PBC. He can work with all of the above, right? But what's happening is because because of this scenario that he's in, um, he he seems like he's available and open to fighting Tank Davis, right? So again. We gotta wait and see what happens. But I honestly, I don't know if the boxing world will want that. You know, because then you'll have another guy with two of Infinity Stones, right? If, if, if uh, Devin Haney does what he needs to do, and he were to be, hypothetically speaking, if he were to beat Tank, if he were to get the strap, right? Then he would have two Infinity Stones. And then, what will happen is because it, then it would put pressure on Tiafimo Lopez and Ryan Garcia, which um, I don't think the boxing world really wants them to have that pressure on them. And so it would be like, okay, now Black Thanos is like really imposing himself, you know? And so you'll have like the, the media, like Chris Mannix and stuff like that, probably panicking. 
and everything of that nature, you know. Because, you know, some, some of these old media guys, what they do is they'll try to, like, they'll try to keep fights from happening. They'll say, oh, you don't need to fight him. Uh, no, no problem. You're a big enough star without him and stuff like that. He needs you, this, that, and the other. You know, so, um, we're going to wait and see what happens. You know, there's a couple of Black Thanoses. Um, I mean, I'm not going to name them all, but, you know, Shakur Stevenson and, um, and Devin Haney are two of them, right? And it's sad that, you know, some, like, in the sport of boxing right now, it, back in the day, you know, you guys fought, you, you fought, you know, you fought regardless but now it's like not 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 so unfortunately you know even even prospects fought each other too you know prospects will fight against each other but since that's not happening um we just gotta wait and see but anyhow leave your thoughts and leave your comments who was signing out Injada.